and resilient people focused on those situations over which they have control. Want some ideas about how to turn your circumstances upside down and create an opportunity to catapult your business into a positive situation? One, surround yourself with positive people. Get rid of those energy vampires that suck the life out of you. They're the ones that are holding you back. Remember, misery loves company. Two, what is causing your problems? It's time to identify what is weighing you down so that you can figure out how to take a detour and turn that problem into an opportunity. Three, what did you learn? No matter what, no matter where, and no matter why, there's always a lesson to learn. If you don't see the lesson, look again. The last thing you want to do is label that as a waste of time. And finally, no matter what, don't give up. This is where your self-belief shows up and it's time to start again. You might need someone to help you with your business plan or strategies. It would be a lot more costly to repeat these problems a second or third time. Learn from these lessons and this is where you rinse and repeat. Remember, success is your birthright. You are listening into the Bishop of Motivation, Mr. Spence Finlayson, and success is your birthright. And of course, of course, uh, you can join him each and every weekday, Monday through Friday, nine o'clock in the morning, right here on fifteen forty AM, Power One of Four Point Five FM, and our ZNS Television Network for immediate response. The time is now six fifty-six AM. Good morning. These deals will be here and gone in a flash. Stop by any live store or. By This is the ZNS Network, providing radio and high-definition television services for the entire Bahamas. ZNS Network is operated by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is located at Harcourt Rusty Bethel Drive, Centerville, Nassau. Our programming is designed to inform, educate, and entertain. We invite you to join us. The following is a preamble of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Whereas 481 years ago, the rediscovery of this family of islands, rocks and keys, heralded the rebirth of the new world. And whereas the people of this family of islands, recognizing that the preservation of their freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. Now know we therefore, we the inheritors of and successors to this family of Allens, recognizing the supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual, do hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation founded on spiritual values and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. October 26, 2021, and the morning edition is live. 
On today's show, the Prime Minister addresses the One Young World Youth Ambassador Summit. The economy of Bimini booming amidst the global pandemic. Air ambulance recognized for their services in the fight against COVID-19. And the battle for Atlantis is back. So let's start the morning off right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Morning Edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. Let's now take you out to our streets where Kelsey Johnson and the Morning Traffic team is standing by with your Tuesday Morning Traffic. Yeah, accessing the road from um, the plaza. Good morning, LaDawn. Good morning, Bahamas. We're live here on Shirley Street and St. Margaret's Road. Now, Shirley Street, the traffic heads westbound. This is a major concern for members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, especially the traffic department. They are out here reminding the motor republic that this particular road is 25 miles per hour. Now, the, joining me this morning is Corporal Patrick Kemp, who will explain that a number of infractions were made on this road by the morning motorists heading into work. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Johnson, and good morning, Bahamas. And you're absolutely correct. Uh, we're in the area of uh, Shirley Street Market Road, where we are conducting a vehicle inspection for various offenses out on the street here, particularly those speeders. Um, the, the miles per hour on this road is 25 miles per hour. And so persons who are exceeding that, that uh, limit, they'll find themselves uh, receiving a ticket for exceeding the speed limit. Now, you said a number of infractions were committed this morning. Um, can you explain what do you mean by um, the infractions? But surprisingly, uh, we still have a lot of persons who are still not utilizing their seat belts. They still have the passengers in the vehicle not utilizing their seat belts. Uh, kids that are still in the front seat of these vehicles. Um, those are, are major issues still in our community when it concerns uh, safety, getting an accident, and not um, having the proper, the proper use it of your seatbelt to prevent any further injuries. And so stuff like that we're looking for, uh, especially, i, I got to reiterate, especially this, this, uh, vehicles, these vehicles, these children are in the front seat. Uh, we just had an incident recently where a child was in the front seat of a vehicle, an accident ran up in the back of another vehicle, and the burn mark from the air bike on that child's face might have sad. And this is one of the things that we're doing to prevent stuff like that from occurring. Now, there's also an access road here if you want to access the, um, the plaza. Um, how dangerous is that if somebody is driving more than 25 miles per hour? How am I supposed to get on the street um, if they're um, going over the speed limit? Well, well, look at it this way. First, first and foremost, Ms. Johnson, we do encourage the drivers, like we always do, to drive with due care and attention, okay? It's incumbent on you as a driver to pay attention while you're on the street. However, if, if you're it, going at a speed that's in excess of the, the, the road limit, uh, you'll find that your breakage, it mightn't be so easy. And then you can find yourself colliding into a vehicle, especially if the road is wet. And during this kind of time of the morning, a lot of persons are traveling through the street and they're not utilizing their headlights uh, still. And a lot of persons' vehicles are defective. And so um, speed plays are a major factor in a lot of accidents that could have been prevented. All right, thank you so much, Corporal Camp. Like I said, we're live on Shirley Street and St. Margaret's Road. We're officers of the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Unit. They are out here making sure that the early morning motorists are driving with caution. We'll toss it back to you in the studio, LaDawn. Staying on the outside, a prefrontal trough and presidual or residual moisture will support the chance of a few showers today. Meanwhile, an eastward moving cold front north of the Bahamas will promote moderate to locally strong winds across the northwest Bahamas. High temperature today is 88 degrees with an overnight low of 75 degrees. Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis is preparing to advocate for the changes that will buffer what he referred to as the greatest threat the Bahamas has ever faced. The Prime Minister previewed the message he wants the world to act on when he addresses the climate change conference in Scotland later this month in his virtual speech on Monday to the One Young World Youth Ambassadors Summit. The summer of 2021 was the hottest on record. As hot as this summer has been, many predict that it may be the coolest summer we experience for the rest of our lives. 
if decisive action is not taken. An estimated 15% of our national GDP and 11% of our people are threatened by the accompanying rise in sea level. Our marine life and fisheries are also at risk as climate change threatens the survival of critical marine habitats like coral reefs. We need big, radical changes to abate this trend and save countries like the Bahamas from a perilous fate. Every coastal region in the world has been or will be severely impacted by climate change in some way. The world is running out of time. 20 new cases of COVID-19 being reported in the Ministry of Health's latest release. 18 here in New Providence, one in Bimini and Cat Key, and the other in Inagua for an overall total case count of 22,279. Three of the New Providence cases have a travel history within the past 14 days. 11 of the cases are females. Hospitalizations are 94 with 13 in the intensive care unit. 1,188 cases remain active. The COVID-19 death toll remains at 600 and 42. Fresh lockdowns are taking place in China, Russia, and Eastern Europe as COVID-19 infections spread. Here at home, the news not so grim with Health and Wellness Minister, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darville, declaring that the days of lockdowns are pretty much behind us. It is our responsibility to lay uh, in the House of Parliament new regulations on the way forward to manage the pandemic and it is not the emergency orders. Nope. The Davis administration like the rest of the world have realized that lockdowns is not the way forward. It was a draconian measures that we was necessary in the initial stages of the pandemic to ensure that we prepare our healthcare systems for potential waves that were coming. Tighter restrictions are necessary from time to time and our tighter restrictions would revolve around proper monitoring of our clusters and ensuring that we have better digital platforms to monitor people in our clusters and that is the direction we are going and that is the direction that our administration have articulated we would go all eyes on Haiti as kidnappings in that country are on the rise with gangs demanding millions in ransom. International reports reveal that there have been about 800 kidnappings in that country so far this year, with 119 people abducted in the first half of October. With Bahamian embassies having a presence in that country, foreign affairs officials say they are closely monitoring the situation with a view to taking urgent action to protect staff. The kidnappings, from what I understand, are largely outside of the um, Port-au-Prince area. But um, it's a situation that we are monitoring very, very carefully. Every day, almost every hour, we're in close touch with the Charge of Affairs, um, Betty Greenslade. We are looking at all of the safety briefings being provided by the UN and other um, countries with larger embassies than ours. We're keeping very close to the safety um, information that we're getting. Um, as from what we can tell right now, our staff is not in any danger. They are in a somewhat um, protected area, which is where most of the diplomats are. Judiciary Chief Justice Sir Brian Marie QC says significant staffing shortages in the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions are currently being addressed. He says a move is necessary as that office is responsible for the prosecution of all criminal matters before the Supreme Court and also oversight of prosecutions in the magistrate's court. Their staffing issues also affect the calendar of the court because obviously cases cannot proceed without prosecutors. Um, so I have, I have addressed these matters with um, the former Attorney General and with the new Attorney General. And I'm hoping that we can see some movement in addressing these systemic problems, which together with the additional judicial resources, I think will allow us to make a serious dent in the backlog. And when we come back, the economy of Bimini booming amidst the global pandemic. So keep it locked.
Sector-based tourism supplies almost $50 million in revenue for Androsians every year. These priceless resources will continue to provide renewable benefits for thousands of people for years to come, as long as we take long-term action to preserve what's rightfully ours. The natural environment has played a vital role in our culture and economy for generations. Let's take care of nature, and nature will take care of us. The economy of Bimini is said to be booming despite the global pandemic. Island tourism officials confirmed to the morning team that some 10 to 15 cruise ships have docked the $90 million Resorts World Pier cruise port over the past few months. The home porting exercise has raked in some 6,000 visitors per week and has put thousands of dollars in the pockets of coconut and straw vendors. Tourism officials credits this uptick in numbers to the island's close proximity to the United States. Additionally, Carnival and other cruise lines like the Celebrity will port sometime next month. The country's air ambulance receiving a special award for their stellar service and contributions during the COVID-19 pandemic from the World Health and Pan American Health Organizations. It's an achievement Director of Operations Jason Sweeting says he's extremely proud of. We were elated upon hearing the news that we would be one of the recipients of the awards. Um, PAHO, WHO, they decided on the year 2021 as the year of the healthcare worker. And, and they recognize people locally, regionally, and globally. And they wanted to bring recognition to those uh, healthcare workers in the Bahamas, and particularly those involved with the ambulance services. And uh, we, were, we were the candidate, and uh, we were really happy that we, we were chosen. Students on Grand Bahama getting a pleasant surprise Monday morning. Governor General His Excellency Cornelius A. Smith visiting the ICANN Community School. He shared his life story and encouraged the young ones to always follow their dreams. Here's Italia Hall. You can become whatever you want to be. Those were the words given to students of the ICANN Community School by Governor General Cornelius A. Smith. The Governor General sharing his story and how he rose to the position of Governor General. He says it was his involvement in public service that propelled him to the top. There is no better profession than public service. Providing service to humanity, service to your community, and you can provide that service in so many ways. As a teacher, you provide service. As a doctor, you provide service. As an engineer, you provide service. But whatever your vocation is, use it to provide service to your country. These students say meeting the Governor General is a once in a lifetime opportunity. It was very special to me, like definitely a moment in my life that I remember. Meeting the Governor General is it's a good honor because we don't really get opportunities like this. And you know, it's a memory to keep as a kid where you can tell your grandkids, oh, I met the Governor General before he goes on. So it's very amazing. I feel awesome, but I like, I was like red because he was like right in my face and then at the same time he was asking me questions but in my head I was like oh my gosh I'm really speaking to him and then I just feel I just feel happy like that I talk to somebody like that. Managing director of the institution Kevin Tomlinson thanking the governor general for taking time out to speak with the group. This is all about his community and building the mindsets of the children and him giving his personal story today of how he grew into the position that he's at, really spoke and said a whole lot. And this is what ICANN Community School is about. It's about bringing social studies, history, bringing the future to life. They can only become what they see. A presentation was then made from the school to the Governor General. A staple in the community has been vandalized. Thankfully, they were not a victim of puppy napping. But the Bahamas Humane Society is still falling prey to a very unjust crime. Here's Antoine Smith. It was after 10 on Sunday night when Inspector Percy Grant received the call. I mean, it was like they tore off the place. The Bahamas Humane Society ransacked by robbers looking to get away with a quick payday. They did get away with a $500 float. 
but it, we, they have left us with a lot of damage. Fencing, torn and doors forced open. The whole ordeal delayed morning operations at the Donmore Avenue puppy shelter for hours. Even the vet's office have been broken into nothing particularly, you know, aimed at. But then again, trying to refile and put things back in order, medications and all that kind of thing, it's a bit daunting. We are um, pretty, just, you know, the staff are able to be depressed this morning. The animals, however, safely tucked away in cages, coming out of the break-in unscathed. As for the animal shelter itself... There's a lot of um, cabinet damages, of course, because they broke into and pried open doors and locks, and, and so it's, gonna, it's costing us. You know, we just had the, the CBS here, and I think we went around $8,000 with locks and systems, and then the camera system, $15,000, and then some fence damaging. So, you know, we are back. The nonprofit Humane Society operates solely based on donations. What little in revenue is made goes directly back into feeding the shelter's pets. For them, the Sunday night break-in is not just a setback, but a direct threat to the organization's operations. The Humane Society is going through so much right now trying to, you know, continue our efforts to the public to help during this pandemic, feeding animals at home, um, you know, keeping up with feeding the surveys, doing so much, you know, for the public for this stuff happen at this particular time. So, you know, we'd like the public to help us keep, keep you know, staying alive. For more on how to help, the Humane Society can be contacted at 323-5138. And as we head to the break, we take a look back at today in Bahamian history. On October 26, 1962, the Stapleton School for Children with Special Needs was dedicated. Also on October 26, 1998, Lord Bishop of the Bahamas, the Right Reverend Drexel Gomez, was elected Archbishop of the Anglican Province of the West Indies. There's a spark of greatness in each of us. That spark is called personality. Individual gifts and talents provide the fuel to set that spark ablaze. Each child has the right to an education which values their personality and nurtures their talents, while teaching them to be respectful to their parents and their cultures. General of the North and Central American and Caribbean Athletics Confederation Keith Joseph was in town recently. While here, he met with President Mike Sands and later made a courtesy call on Sports Minister the Honorable Mario Boleg. Now that the Bahamas has the privilege of, of being the host of the president of NACAC, that is an excellent opportunity for us to increase our collaboration enhance our relationship, broaden our horizons, and collectively bolster the sport for the Americas. Your proximity to the USA as a gateway uh, to the Bahamas, your proximity and strategic location relative to the members of uh, NACAC allows us to talk in practical terms of the possibility of establishing a home for NACAC, a headquarters for NACAC. Um, we've never had a home. Um, the principle has always been that we move wherever the president is located. That has its own limitations. With the Confederation looking for a permanent home, Minister Boleg told Joseph the Bahamas would be the better choice. With Mike Sands being the president of NACA, it, that don't mean he's going to be the president forever. But for us to just have an establishment of such in our country, meaning that whoever becomes the president as time goes on will be able to establish a home here in the Bahamas is the most important. As you can say, as, he, as the Secretary General said earlier, when you look at us, this country has a per capita and the performance and how we have performed at the world level and Olympic level, I mean, this is the place in our proximity to the United States. This is the place where everybody wants to be. Um, so it's affordable to come here, and I believe if the opportunity allow that we should be able to provide that home for NACAC, we will. But of course, we have to look at the logistics and everything and see how best possible 
but our doors are open for the initiatives and we hope that um, the plans as it relates to how we can get that happening will be presented and then we can look at it. After skipping last year as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Battle for Atlantis College Basketball Tournament will be back in 2021. In addition to the men, there will also be a women's division this year. And that's just another step in the tournament's evolution. ESPN didn't televise us, and Hawaii, if you guys remember, probably had the best preseason tournament. We're now surpassed Hawaii, and we have ESPN on board. So that within itself tells you the professionalism and how well run the tournament is. And each year has been great. You know, it has been something that this is the one event I can say that we, we obviously have to bring in um, college basketball officials and so on, but the entire team, Atlantis team, is involved. Some, we pull people from different departments that don't know nothing about basketball, but they carry a role in the entire organization of the event. It really is a team, team, team effort to make it work. We're the, literally the only sanctioned basketball tournament out of the United States. Um, and it's, we've got the women come in November 20th to 22nd, the men on the 24th to 26th, and Connecticut for women is one of the top women teams they're going to be playing. So it is really a great time. And thanks to the ma Magical Builders organization out of California, the Pinewood Baseball Park is set to get a major facelift. This relationship all came about thanks to the connections of local pro baseball players such as Lucius Fox. We look forward to turning that into a beautiful complex, you know, that we all played on. You know, since I was a little kid, I would always go to Pinewood Park to have fun, whether that was the basketball court or walk down the street and, you know, play the, you know, I, uh, came up with maximum development at the time. That was at Pinewood Park. We used to work up there every day. And, you know, like Todd said, Jazz made it to the big leagues this year. But that's where we started. You know, we, we worked out there every day. And just to turn that place into a, a beautiful complex with me and the world last, and we look forward to doing that. And after the break, we'll give you the latest on the Young Leaders Summit set for later on this week. So keep it locked. One of the things that the church must be aware of that this is no seat time and season for us to get so deep and holy that we can't hail folk who hurt next to us. We can't hail the people in our neighborhood. We can't see how hungry they are. We must, we can't get too deep, brothers and sisters, and so anointed that we forget that if someone hurts you, you gotta forgive them. Sundays at 8.30 a.m. on ZNS TV 13. Yesterday, we introduced you to a Bahamian artist who took his junk and withdrawal and put it into puzzle making. This morning, Kelsey Johnson tells us just how he was able to take this Bahamian tradition internationally. The Bahamas to the world is a popular phrase used when Bahamians excel on the international level. Well, in this case, the buyer's market. One Junkanua rushed his way into stores throughout the region, making a local product a major hit. Anton Thompson, owner of Jigsaw Puzzle, has tapped into the international market. His Junkanoo puzzles are now available for purchase on Amazon. Thompson, who received the good news over the weekend, says it wasn't easy. Now what you have to do is you have to create a company in the U.S. to get an Amazon account. So that took me like maybe like two years of just grinding out, trying to find, you know, ways to get my company, you know, create a company over there in the U.S. And then I had to basically create a shop in the U.S. 
to create, you know, to get my stuff from here to over there. We um, did it with Amazon, but we're starting right now to deal with Target and Walmart. The Amazon, I started working on it from 2019. So it finally, you know, came true for us last year in 2020. It was just, it took a while for me to finish creating the puzzles out of mass production. Creating the puzzles is just one part of the process. Sending the product to the fulfillment centers throughout the USA was new for Thompson. You could have like a, a, a thousand, you know, but sometimes it, it, it depends on, you know, if it's your personal brand, you could have like 10. Seeing as it's my personal brand, I started off with 100. So they were able to, you know, take it, because you know, they, the, um, the fulfillment centers are throughout the US, so they will take that 100 you get and split it up into 20 different locations. So it's all about, you know, supply and demand. If you have enough for them to um, market in one state, They'll, you know, they, they request more, and then the quicker move, they ask for a bigger scale. Jigsaw Puzzle Bahamas is not a new company, but marketing and public relations will be a key component as supply and demand increases. Being an artisan, I've got, I've got to work with other artisans where, you know, not just in straw, we know with straw have been around for all our lives, but also um, people make junk new dolls, um, people make soaps, Lotions, a lot of Bahamians make a lot of Bahamian made products. Uh, firehouse spice, you know, their spices are made right here in the Bahamas. So I think there's so much Bahamian artisans that, you know, they're just trying to find an avenue to get their stuff out of there. Now, trying to get stuff out of the Bahamas internationally has been a task. Junkanoo, it's a masterpiece to the puzzle. The Glory Seekers Institute will put on its skills, opportunity, activation and release Young Leaders Summit October 28th through 30th. This morning we are joined by event host Charles Smith Jr. Mr. Smith, welcome to the morning edition. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Now I know this summit will be held in hybrid format. Tell us a little bit more about this initiative and what are some of the topics that will be discussed? All right. So well, thank you so much for asking. This year's summit will... Um dedicate ourselves to equipping, empowering, and, and edifying, sorry, persons in the area of media, ministry, and the marketplace. So we'll be dedicating our time to entrepreneurs, um, those in the creative market, um, those, of course, with church areas, praise and worship, uh, prayer, preaching, and all of that good stuff. And who are some of the presenters at this year's summit? All right, so this year we'll have um, Pastor Broderick McBride from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, myself, I'll be presenting as well. We have Keishelle Davis, Sharika Brown, uh, Minister Tanya Duncombe, Sturman Roll, and the list goes on. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot, but it's going to be great. And, and Mr. Smith, talk us a little bit about how did this actually, uh, I guess, come into being? All right, so basically um, I was inspired by the Lord to do this because I feel as though we are in a time where we need to be activated and empowered to do that which he has called us to do. So just following the leading of his spirit. And are there any plans in the pipeline uh, for future summits? Yes. Um, next year, hopefully we can do it on a greater scale. But I believe that um, it's going to be a, a great time this year. We believe that it's going to continue annually. Charles Smith, Jr., thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Edition. And all the best to you and your team. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, too. Want to stay tuned to the ZNS network for news as it happens, TV and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition at 6.30 and the Bahamas tonight at 7. And that's a wrap for us this morning. For the entire team, I'm LaDawn Davis. Have a great morning, everyone. What kind of